All right, tip number four, don't skip calibration frames. I've been doing astrophotography for several years now, so in this video I've put together a few of my top tips for those just starting out in the hobby of astrophotography. Comment down below with some of the things that you wish you knew before starting out in astrophotography, and let's jump right into it with tip number one. Your astrophotography journey is your own and not anybody else's. What do I mean by that? Whether you're using a portable star tracker, a bigger deep sky mount, a reflector telescope, a refractor telescope, holding up your phone to the eyepiece to take a photo of the moon or a planet or something like that, using a tracking mount to take wide field shots of the Milky Way or just a camera sitting on top of a static tripod with no tracking at all. There's no one right way of doing things and it's dependent upon what you're trying to achieve. Then when you factor in things like weather, local light pollution, your work, your other life commitments, it can start to feel as though the odds are stacked against you, but be patient, take the time to learn your equipment and things will come in time. It took me three frustrating nights to take this image of the Andromeda Galaxy. That was my first ever deep sky image using a Skywatcher Star Adventurer and a kit lens. And I think we can all agree it's nothing to write home about, but what that image represents is the start of my journey into deep sky astrophotography. And then there's image processing, lots of different software options to choose from. So if you've been lucky enough to get a clear night and it might even be new moon, you've got all your equipment set up, everything's going really well. You're taking images, the images look great as they're coming off of the camera and you've then stacked them you now need to process those images. And again, that is a huge learning curve, lots of different ways of doing the same thing and achieving similar results in different bits of software. However, there are some basic principles that you would want to follow, such as um, levels and curves adjustments, but the final image will be personal to you and how you like to process your astrophotography may be different to how somebody else likes to process their astrophotography. Tip number two, don't feel guilty for taking a night off if it's a clear night. Astrophotographer's guilt is a real thing. I see it talked a lot about on Twitter. I know that I feel it myself if I don't feel like going out on a clear night. So sometimes what will happen is it will get to eight o'clock in the evening. I'm free to now do whatever I want. And I look outside, it's still clear, I think, Mm, I'm just too tired to set up the telescope, I can't be bothered, and I end up going and sitting on the sofa, and I'm reasonably happy with my decision to do that because I'm tired and I just want to relax. I then do what most people do, is I start opening up Twitter and Instagram and having a look at what everybody else is doing, and then I start to feel really guilty that everybody is out imaging with their telescopes. And then you start to think, oh, you know, I wish I'd have just put in a bit of effort and gone out last night and put up with the tiredness the next day and produced some amazing images. But another way to look at it is it's gotten to quite late on in the evening, you're really tired, you kind of just want to get into bed and have an early night, but you think to yourself, no, I will set up and I will start taking some images. So you start setting up and because you're rushing around and you didn't really want to do it in the first place, you start making mistakes, you start to rush things, things start to go wrong, you start to get incredibly frustrated and annoyed at yourself. And instead of having the telescope set up within sort of say 20 minutes and imaging, you're there maybe an hour, hour and a half later and you still haven't started imaging. And therefore you think, do you know what? I need to go to bed soon. I'm just gonna bring my telescope in because I can't get anything to work tonight. And you end up really annoyed, really frustrated. You end up having a crappy night's sleep anyway because you're really angry that you've not been able to get your astrophotography gear working, even though you did everything exactly the same as you would normally do it, it still didn't work. And so actually sometimes it's better to just give yourself a night off because you might have saved yourself with a night of frustration instead. And trust me, I've been there before. It is okay to take a night off. There'll always be another clear night. But the problem is if you're in the UK, it might be another two months before it comes around. All right, tip number three, you will probably buy the wrong equipment the first time and end up either upgrading that equipment within 12 months or selling your initial equipment that you bought to then fund your new purchases 12 months later. Let's take telescopes for example. Some people obviously not all people, but some people will come into astrophotography after having a beginner's telescope where they've been able to look through the eyepiece and see really detailed views of the moon or a planet. And they've been taking pictures of that on their smartphone and they're really happy with that and they start sharing that on social media and they think to themselves, 
I'd really like to get into deep sky astrophotography now. And they start to look at how to get into the hobby and hopefully we'll watch a video like this and learn all about astrophotography and the amazing hobby that it is. The problem is if you take those beginner telescopes, they are generally not geared towards astrophotography. So anything that is an EQ2, EQ3 mount, something like that, is generally not going to be sturdy enough for astrophotography. Anything that is only manually tracking the sky isn't going to be great for deep sky astrophotography. And I think it's important to say that, generally speaking, imaging telescopes and visual telescopes aren't the same thing. So if you're wanting the best visual astronomy that you can have for the lowest amount of money, then you're going to want to buy a big Dobsonian telescope, just a huge light bucket that will gather loads of light and you'll get the best views of moon and planets and some of the brighter nebulae like the Orion Nebula or galaxies like the Andromeda Galaxy. You certainly don't want to have what I have, a three inch refractor, because visually that isn't going to be anywhere near as good, but they cost around the same price. Now, if I want to do astrophotography, then a three inch refractor is absolutely ideal for nebulae mostly and some galaxies. A Dobsonian is only going to manually track the sky. So if you're trying to take deep sky images of the Orion Nebula, for example, you're going to find that really tricky because the target is going to move across the field of view really quickly and you're not going to be able to track it like you would with a mount like I use, like the HEQ5. That's not to say that it can't be done because I do see people with Dobsonians that take images by just holding up their phone or camera to the eyepiece and that does work. But if you want to get really serious into the hobby, then you will need something that tracks the sky. And it's okay to buy the wrong thing at first. When I first got into the hobby, I bought a Celestron Astromaster 130EQ. Now the mount was absolutely useless but the telescope itself, a nice six inch ref uh, reflector, was very good. Um, I got some great views of planets and of the moon and I really enjoyed it, holding up my phone to the eyepiece like a lot of people do for starting out and it was great and that served a purpose for quite a long time. But when I wanted to get into deep sky astrophotography that was now no good and I needed to upgrade my equipment so I sold it which helped fund my Skywatcher 72ED which you can see behind me just there. All right tip number four, don't skip Calibration frames. Calibration frames make an unbelievable difference to your images. Take this shot of the Horsehead Nebula that I did in January of 2022. This has no calibration frames whatsoever because I just moved house. I was imaging in my new back garden for the first time. I just wanted to see how the data came out compared to my old house and therefore I stacked the image and I processed it like I would any other image. But you can see the issue here with massive gradients, it's quite noisy, etc, etc. Compare that to this image, which does have the calibration frames applied. It's exactly the same data from the same imaging session. All I've done is added in a set of dark frames and a set of flat frames to the image, and you can see that it is a thousand times better than the first result. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot better. All right, tip number five. Use the resources out there that are available to you. There are forums such as Stargazers Lounge, Cloudy Nights, there's also Reddit, but mm. there are lots of Facebook groups out there that you can join. Some of the people on there will be helpful to you. Others will just be condescending internet wankers. There's no getting away from that. It is Facebook, let's be honest. There are lots of useful websites out there. I have a website myself. I'll leave it up to you whether you actually find it useful or not, but I do have a website if you want to check it out, astroexploring.com. And there are local astronomy clubs as well. The last two years admittedly have been a little bit trickier in terms of meeting up with people, but you cannot beat time with people who are vastly more experienced than you with understanding the equipment that you've got and things like that and actually getting to meet up with other people getting hands on your equipment and getting them to show you and explain to you how your equipment works just is completely invaluable you cannot put a price on that although astronomy clubs do cost money so I guess you can put a price on that and that is much much better than watching YouTube videos with idiots like me trying to tell you what to do over the internet you can't beat being shown it in real life there are lots more tips that I could give you but this video is long enough I do have a page on my website which I will link in the description down below which gives you some more handy tips for beginners in astrophotography I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one